What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today we're gonna to go over how to make this flag. And if you're not into making flags or you're kind of tired of seeing them, I think this will still be a pretty helpful video. We're gonna talk about how to set up your tool paths. We'll talk about doing V-carves, uh, flat bottom V-carves. Uh, we got a, a lot of stuff to go over, but they're kind of some basic fundamental things that I think everybody needs to know to be comfortable with this program. So let's just get to it. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to my website and I've got a bunch of other videos there that you can check out. But for right now, what we're going to do is go to this Makers Resources tab. And if you scroll down, there's a bunch of free SVGs on here. But what you're going to want to do is grab this flag here and then we can grab one of these other logos. Uh, let's do this fire department one. And they're both going to be zip files, so you're just going to have to extract those. Once you're done with that, we're going to open up Carveco Maker. We'll open up a new model. And we're going to set our dimensions to 21 by 11.25 inches. And I've got the corner selected, the lower left corner, as our origin. So just click OK. All right, now we're going to want to go ahead and bring those vectors in. So let's go to our default layer. I'm going to change the name of this to Flag. All right, now we're going to right click and say import. And we just need to find that file that we downloaded. So this is the flag. And that's going to be the perfect size for this. Now we can go ahead and make a new layer. And we'll call this one fire for the fire department logo. Click again and say import. And now we need to find that Maltese cross. And I'm just going to take this and move it over a little bit. And we're going to make it a little smaller by grabbing this up in the corner here. We don't need to get it perfect right now. But that looks like a pretty good size. So I'm just going to drag it off to the side. And now what I want to do is put an outline around this. So I'm going to select that outermost part of it. And we're going to come over to here, this offset vectors. And if you come up here, you can put in a number. But what I like to do is just wait until, see if you move your cursor over, it turns black. So now if you click and drag, it just makes it to the size that you want. Whatever you think looks good. So I think something like that is pretty good. And now I want a bunch of copies of this. So I'm just going to select that outline that we just made and I'll hit control C and then control V will paste the copies. And I'm going to do that about six times. Just hit control V and I know you can't see anything happening, but if I click that and move it, you can see that it has multiple copies of that outline. So let's just put that back. And now I'm going to select this. So I got something down here that I don't want. Let me select that and delete it. So now I want to select everything just by drawing a box around it. And we can move this manually and kind of get it to where we want. Or what I prefer to do is we'll group everything together by clicking this button here, group. And you see that it turned purple. So that means that whole thing is all grouped together. So now I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to select one of these shorter stripes here. If we go to vector, align, and we can just align this uh, horizontally, left and right. And that'll center it in the middle of that stripe. And now I need to get it centered for the height. So we'll hold select again. I'll click that stripe to deselect it. And then I've got a box here that you can't really see, but I'm gonna select that box on the outside of the flag. So I've got the Maltese cross and that box selected. We'll say vector, align, and we're gonna do vertical center this time. And it was actually pretty close, so we didn't have to move it. 
right, so now we need to start cleaning up some of these stripes. We've got them overlapping our uh, Maltese cross here. So let's select the cross. I'm actually going to deselect everything by clicking ungroup. Now what I want to do is remove everything that's within this outline that we made from the stripes. So I'm going to select the stripe, hold shift, and then select the outline. And if we say vector, merge, and subtract, it'll cut it out. But the reason we needed to make multiple copies is because every time we cut that shape out, it deletes it. So we'll go down, select the next stripe, hold shift, select the outline, and again, vector, merge, subtract. And the second thing that you select is always going to be what you subtract from the first. So select the line, hold shift, select the outline, vector, merge, subtract. And we'll just keep doing that. All right, now I made a few too many of those copies. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that outline and delete those. All right, and that's really about it. That's all we've got to do for the design part of this. Now we need to start grouping stuff together and then we'll make the tool paths. So first let's group these stripes together. And I'm just clicking and dragging and selecting them. And then I hold shift and I click and drag to select the rest of these. And we'll go again to this button here, click group. And once they've turned purple, they're grouped together. Now let's group our stars together. Now there's a couple different ways that you can select things. If you click and drag from right to left and select stuff, it will select everything that you've drug your cursor over. If you go from the right and click and drag, it will only select the things that you've completely drawn the box around. See how it didn't select the stripes that time? So that's a good feature when you're trying to just select parts of stuff. Otherwise, we'd have to go and you know, deselect every single one of these stripes after selecting all of this. So that saves us a little bit of time there. So now let's group that together. So now we've got our stripes, we've got our logo, and we've got our stars individually grouped together. All right, now we can start doing our tool paths. And I like to start with the stripes first because normally what I'll do is I'll cut these and that'll give me the lines that I need so I can stain my union blue and the rest of the flag red. So I just like to do that before everything starts getting too complicated. So for the stripes, I just wanna clear out that area with an end mill. So we're gonna come down here to create area clearance toolpath. And first let's start by defining our material. So we'll click setup. I'm using three quarter inch pine so I'll set this to 0.75 inches. Now you can go off the top or the bottom for your zero. I prefer using the top for stuff like this. Uh, if I'm doing through cuts or maybe 3D work, I'll use the bottom. But for this one, I'm just gonna go off the top. You can also set it to somewhere in between if you'd like. So we'll click OK. And if you rotate this, you can see now it's got some depth to it. All right, now we need to take a look at this here, this machine safe Z. And what this is going to do is set our retract height for the bit. So every time that this is making a rapid movement between stripes, it's going to lift up 0.1 inches. You can set it a little higher if you'd like. 0.1 is what I'm comfortable with. Setting it higher than this will take more time, so I try to keep it low. We can also set a home position here. I just have the X and Y set to zero and Z set to two inches. And once you set these, it should save and that'll just be your default every time. Now we need to select a tool, so let's go to add. 
and I'm just going to use an eighth inch end mill. Now, there's a couple things that I like to edit here. I will generally change the feed rates and the plunge rate because a lot of times they're set a little low. Um, I just have this set to 100 and 100. Uh, I'm not really worried about the spindle RPM because I'm just gonna set that at the router myself and you can change the tool number. Now this is important if you're using multiple tools and you try to put them all together. If you have two tools that are the same tool number, the program won't let you actually use those at the same time. It'll give you an error saying that you have two tools with the same number. So just make sure that if you're using different tools and trying to set up one tool path with multiple tools in it, that they have different numbers on them. So we can go ahead and click OK and we'll click select. And now we have a couple other numbers that we have to change. We can set a start depth if we'd like. I just want it to start at zero. Our finish depth is how deep it's going to cut. So I like to set my stripes to 0 0.08 inches and we don't really need to worry about the rest of this stuff. Now we can name this. I like to name it exactly what it is, so stripes and we'll just click calculate. And you can see there, it has calculated our tool path for the stripes. Now we can close out of that and we can move on to our other tool paths. So next let's do our stars. For this, we're gonna do a V-carve. And we have a couple options here. We can set a maximum depth if we want. Uh, for the stars, we're not gonna do that. We'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute when we do this logo. So let's just select a tool. And there's a ton of tools in here already. I haven't really found it necessary to add my own custom tools. I generally just edit the ones that are in here. And if you look here, you'll notice that I've changed the tool number to three. Uh, that's just so we don't run into any problems like I was talking about before. So I have my step down for this set to 0.156. My feed rate is 150 and plunge rate is 150. We'll go ahead and select that. So that's a 60 degree V-bit. See our safe Z here and our home is set exactly how we had it set before. Our material thickness is already set. It saves that once you set it for uh, one tool path in the job. Uh, we're not going to worry about a roughing tool for this one. We can change this to stars. And we'll click calculate. And now it's calculated the toolpath for the stars. We'll hit X. Now we're going to do the logo. Select that. Come over to toolpaths. Again, we're going to go to V-carve for this. This time we're going to set a maximum depth. So we're going to select this here, limit tool maximum depth. And I have it set to 0 0.08, which is the same as my stripes. Now we need to select our carving tool, which is going to be our V-bit. So we'll come down and select the same one that we use for the stars, this quarter inch diameter, uh, 60 degree V-bit. We'll say select. But now we need to select a roughing tool. You can do this without selecting one, but it takes a lot more time because it's going to use the V-bit itself to step over to remove a majority of this material. So if we select a eighth inch end mill, for example, say select, it's going to remove as much material as it can and leave any of the sharp points or any of these you know, tight curves that it may not be able to fit into or any of these tight spots here. It'll leave that for the V-bit. So we'll just call that our logo. Click Calculate. All right, now we can hit the X here. And we can take a look at all of these at the same time, or we can do them individually. Uh, let's look at our stripes first. So if we right click, you can just simulate the tool path. Uh, I like doing this simulation control bar gives you a little bit more control. You could just click play. You can sort of step through it and just do each movement. You can click this one here, which does each individual part. 
So that'll do that one stripe, and it'll come and do another stripe. Or you can just click play, and it'll quickly move through all of it. So that's our stripes. Turn our material on here. And now you can see that that's cut down 0 0.08 inches. Now let's do our stars. Right click, simulation control bar. You can just play through all that. All right, so that's how our stars are gonna cut. And now let's do the logo. And I just wanna step through this a little bit. Let's actually just do one part at a time here. So you can see there it's using that end mill to start out. And it's cutting through all the areas that it'll fit inside of. And when it comes to some of these smaller detailed parts, it may not be able to fit in there, so it may not remove much material. All right, now we're coming around with the V-bit. So that's gonna clean up all these edges for us and it's gonna go in and get all our little detail pieces. And I can zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. So it's not leaving a completely sharp bottom, it's leaving a flat bottom that's what we told it to do. We told it to only go to 0 0.08 inches. So we'll just finish that off. All right, now that it's done, I just like to zoom in, make sure that it's doing what I think it's going to do. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Check the stars out, make sure they look good. Now, something else I like to do, if you right click on Toolpath and go to Toolpath Summary, you'll get an actual like written description of everything that you're going to do. So for example, we can make sure that we put in the correct material thickness. Uh, Z0 is the top of the material. It does give you a machining time. Uh, you need to change these scale factors here. That's not something that I've done yet, so that's probably a little high. Uh, it will probably take less than half this actually. So, and you can just read through this, make sure everything looks like how you think it's going to look. Uh, your finish depth's 0 0.08. You know, if your finish depth said 0.8, oops, you know, maybe you clicked the wrong button or something, so you need to go back and edit that. So this is a, just a nice quick way to, to read everything over, make sure it's going to do what you think it's going to do. So we can close that out. Now we need to save these tool paths. Now, what we also haven't done is save this design. So saving tool paths and saving your design are two different things. Uh, I probably should have started saving the design much earlier, but if we come up here to save, we can just call this whatever we'd like. Uh, fire flag. We'll save that. Now we need to save our tool paths and that's gonna generate uh, whatever G code we need. Uh, I use a Shapoko, so it's going to generate a .nc. So if we come over here to save tool paths, you're gonna have this list and we can move things uh, between these two sides. This is the list of all of our tool paths over here and these are the ones that are it's going to save and we can group them together by having them on the right side. So like I said, I like to do the stripes first, so we'll keep these on this side. Well, let's go ahead and move any of these other ones over. So, and we've got two for logo, because don't forget, it's got the eighth inch end mill, and it's got that 60 degree V-bit. So we've got our stripes. Now what I'll do is I'll come to browse here, and let me go back to get out of that folder. I try to just save everything under one folder, which is the name of the flag. So I'll right click, say new folder, Again, we'll just call that fire flag. Click open, click open again. And we're going to call that stripes. So we'll click open. Now you can see here it's changed the file name itself to stripes and it's saving under that folder fire flag. And down here I've got, again, this is just for me because I have a Shapoko. So I've selected Carbide 3D Shapoko Millimeter. 
there's many options in here. There's pretty much any machine you can imagine. If it's not in here, uh, they'll add it or you could do a custom one. But again, we'll just make sure we have carbide 3D Shapoko millimeter for mine. And like I said, that'll save it as a .nc file. So I just click save. And it may not look like it did anything, but you quickly saw that little save thing pop up. So now I'm gonna move the stripes out. So now for this next part, I'm gonna select the stars and I'm going to do these two logos. So everything but the stripes basically. And we'll just call that stars and logo. Click save. So now that saved everything else together. So now if you have a bit setter or if you use like the depth stop collars like I do, this will just keep running. It'll stop and prompt you to do a bit change. Uh, if you don't have the bit setter or you don't have stop collars to set all of your tools to the same length, you're going to want to be able to set your zero manually. So you can't actually do these all together. We can run these two V bits here together because you don't need to change anything. So we would just remove that. And then we would just save this as star and logo, say V bit only. So you can save that. Then we can remove both of these. And then we'll just select the logo and mill. And I always like to do the V bit first before I do the end mill. Uh, I just think you get a much better finish on your cuts that way. So now we can change this to logo uh, end mill only. And we'll save it. And that's really it. Uh, these are pretty simple to make. I think this is a good thing to practice with. It gives you a good opportunity of learning some of the different buttons on here. There's a ton of stuff that you can do with this program. Uh, you can do different 3D. You can actually model in 3D, but if you have an STL, you can bring that in. And I've got videos on that. I've got videos on how to design some different stuff, like how to do curved text. Uh, but you know, this is a good crash course in this program, basically. So if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Really appreciate it if you would like and share this video with your friends and anyone that you think could benefit from this. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. I got a bunch of other videos on CNC router stuff, uh, lasers, and then just regular making stuff in general. So I will see everyone over on one of these other videos.